Well, once again, allow me to welcome you this morning for our meditation. And we shall be sharing our reflection from the book of Matthew chapter 14 and verse 30. My names are Reverend Appella, and allow me to also introduce my sign language interpreter, uh, 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 Rosalind Joguna. Now, friends, this morning we shall be looking at the subject of overcoming distractions in life. The truth is that distractions will always come in life. And we want to look at one personality here in the book of Matthew 14, and I'm going to read from verse 30. Allow me to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm allow me to read from verse 28. It says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter came down out, uh, out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, and, the, and when he saw the wind that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and he began to sink and cried and said, "Lord, save me." And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, "O ye of little faith, why did you doubt?" Now, it's a very interesting story of Peter actually watching Jesus walking on water. It was a situation where uh, Jesus had constrained his disciples to get to a ship, and, and the fo- I mean, uh, um, while they got in the middle of the lake, the wind became boisterous. They were worried that they were going to drown. And then Jesus walk, goes to them walking on water, and while he walks on water, they look at Jesus and think that Jesus is a ghost. And Peter looks at Jesus and tells Jesus, hey, if it be you, bid me to come to you on water, and I will come. And for sure, Peter actually, Jesus tells Peter to come. And Peter steps out of the boat and begins to walk to Jesus on water. But when he, the Bible says, it's very clear to say that when he saw that the wind was boisterous, it is said that he began to sink and he cried to Jesus, asking Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, save me. And Jesus stretched his hand to, uh, to save him. Now, the reason why Peter began to sink was because he got distracted by the storms. And me, I have learned in life, and I'll share this with you as you, as, as you listen to me today, That whether you like it or not, distractions will always come in your field of life. When you're driving at work, when you're in the gym training, when you're in church, so many distractions will will always come. And in every stage of our lives, we will experience pressure to be distracted. Once in a while, I go to train in the gym, and it's very easy for you to be distracted as you're training and you're not focused on what your instructor is saying. As the year starts, most people make resolutions in the year. You know, I'm going to be more prayerful. I'm going to read the word of God. I'm going to make new friends. I'm going to be dedicated. Those are actually goals that we make. But very few people attain these goals simply because they are distracted. Now, as followers of Jesus, we will always face distractions in the things that we do and in our spiritual journeys. As we try to grow in Christ and as we try to meditate in the word of God, we will experience what what I call disturbances and interruptions towards this great cause of Christ. This will always come our way. But the beautiful thing, my viewers, is that God has brought us in such a space that we can be free from distractions. We can make up our mind to be free from distractions. First of all, when it occurs to you and me that Jesus himself, who was the son of God and who was on this earth, also was tempted to be distracted from the course that he was called to do, it gives you great comfort to realize that in many ways, Jesus experienced distractions. And I'm going to give you one one of the, some of the things that Jesus went through to experience destruction. One, in Matthew chapter 4, Uh, He goes to the wilderness and the devil begins to tempt him because he was hungry, you know. And he tells him, uh, if if you're hungry, turn, I mean, if if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Because he simply knew Jesus was hungry, 
the enemy wanted Jesus to begin to eat, to distract him from his course, you know? So Jesus overcame these temptations in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. Now, during his ministry, he fed 5,000 people, and he made the, 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 the disciples to get to the boat very quickly. And the beauty, and, and as I've just read, when actually he got to the boat and, 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 and he sent the crowd away, John tells us that Jesus knew that the crowd wanted to force him to be king. That's why he sent them away before he got to the boat. If you read this scripture in Matthew 14, the crowd had to be sent away because they wanted to make a king out of Jesus. They wanted to remove Jesus from the focus of dying on the cross and make him a king for the Jews. So Jesus left the crowd behind. He knew their intention. They wanted to, feel for the, to fulfill their long-awaited dream, but it was not in the will of God. So distractions will always come. Jesus went through it. I mean, though, I mean and in, in so many areas, as you read scripture, Jesus went through distractions. But how can we actually be able to overcome distractions? And that is what I want to talk about today. How, do, how can you be able to overcome distractions? Number one, it is important for you and me to understand that for you to be able to deal with distraction, you must first of all appreciate that they are there. Never ever live in an assumption that distractions are not there. Distractions are there. Wherever you go, you will always get distracted. And so you must make up your mind to understand, first of all, that distractions exist. Anything could come to distract you. Even good things can mislead you. Good things sometimes turn out to be enemies of the better and the best. So you must begin to ask yourself, how, I mean, what am I called to do? What has God assigned me to do? And am I, am I pursuing that mission? After understanding that these distractions are present, number two, it is important for you to have, to understand your mission on this earth. What is your divine assignment? What has God called you to do? Is your mission your priority? Jesus made it priority to accomplish the mission that he was given. He came to do the will of the Father, and that was to die on the cross for you and me. And it was put on him even the expect, I mean the expectation, there were so many other expectations that his friends had for him, but he remained faithful to his mission. His mission was the cross. When he got to the boat and and, 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 and at, at some point in Mark chapter 8, as on, they were on their way to Gadarenes, and the Bible says the disciples actually woke him up and asked him, Master, can't you save us? We are perishing. When he rose up, he was focused in his mission. The Bible says he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was calm. And the disciples marveled and said, What manner of man is this, that the winds and the sea obey him? The technical aspect of that incident is this. Jesus wakes up on the sea and he realizes, my goodness, my mission is to die for, uh, for, for, for humanity on the cross. And I believe when he looked at the lake and he saw no cross, he knew that his mission was not over. He understood his mission. The storm came to distract him. So many things came his way, but he understood his mission. I want to throw a challenge to you this morning. What is your mission? Do you understand your divine assignment? Do you understand why you are living on earth today? Are you pa are passionate about what God has called you to do? What is your mission? You cannot do everything. You cannot say you're doing everything. There must be one thing that God has called you to do and you're doing it to the best of your ability, and that is your mission. And when you're committed to that mission, God will give you grace to be able to surmount any form of difficulty to achieve your goals. Two things you must, re you must understand, even as I wind up. One, distractions will always be there. So never ever think that you'll be at a spot one day that you're not distracted. Distractions will always be there. 
Number two, while distractions are there, it would be important for you to understand that the best way to deal with the distraction, with the distractions, is to have a mission and concentrate on the mission. I want to wrap up my sermon, my homily this morning, by asking you a question: What would you like people to remember you for? People talk about legacy, and it's true you need to leave a legacy. What will you be remembered for? What will the people actually on earth today say that you did? Food for thought. Heavenly Father, we ask that God you help us not to be distracted. And even as I've shared this, may you bless all my viewers and bless all the people who have listened to this homily. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.